Welcome back to chapter 5. Now that the core logic and mechanism is complete, we will add the finishing touches. As you know, in the final result, I have various colors of PP spinners that can be set per instance. So to set parameters before things are run, we need to go to the construction script in BP Spinner. Now hold down S and click to create a sequence. On the first line, we will drag in ARM2 bar and ARM2 light. Starting with ARM2 bar, create a dynamic material instance. Select M emissive as the source material. Save it as a variable. And then drag and set vector parameter value. The name is, as you recall, color. Repeat this step for ARM2 light. Once you're done, for the color values, let's promote it to a variable called spinner color. Compile and give it a default value of red. And control D to duplicate and connect it over with the other one. Also, don't forget to check on the I to make sure it is instance editable. Now to set the color of the Niagara system in the event graph from the nstro variable, drag and set color parameter. And user is color. And for param, it should be the same color. So drag in the spinner color variable and connect it. Compile save, go to map one, zoom in. And as you can see, you can set the color here like this but I'm going to keep it red. If you recall again, in the final result, I have different lengths, and we want to achieve this procedurally and not have to manually scale and position them per instance. So go back to the BP spinner and go to the viewport. And I'm going to explain how it's going to be done, but do not follow this step as it can mess up your component locations. But the process looks like this. First, we scale up the ARM2 bar, then we need to offset it up, then set the arm to start to the same location as arm to bar, and then offset down arm to end. This is exactly what we have to do in the construction script. So go to the construction script in BP Spinner, and we'll set it up on the second line of the sequence. We'll first drag in arm to bar, and set relative scale. Connect it to the second outlet. I'll make a reroute node and clean up the position. Then right click to split struct pin here and put one and one. And for Z, right click and promote it to a variable. Let's call it arm to scale. Compile and set the default value as one. Now move it down and also check the I on for this variable to make it instance editable. Now from arm2 scale, drag and minus 1. Then multiply by 80, which is the default length of the arm2 bar in centimeters. Control the arm2 bar and we do a add local offset. Again, do a split struct pin, and in delta Z, plug in the result of the multiplication. Then drag in arm to start, and we need to set relative location. Connect it up, and for location, we do control D, arm to bar, and then from there we get relative location. Uh, make some space and plug it in. The last step is to drag in arm to end. 
and add local offset. Do a split struct pin. And on delta z, we need the result of this multiplication multiplied by minus 1. And let's zoom out and plug it in. Compile save and go back to map one viewport and in the BP spinner, change the scale. And as you can see, it offsets correctly. Now for the finishing touches, we want to add a bit of randomness in the impulse. So go to BP spinner and in event begin play, drag in the impulse scaler, get and multiply by a random float in range. I'll set it to a range of 1 and 2. And the result of this, we drag and set impulse scaler and connect it up. That's everything we need here, so compile, save, and go back to the map 1 level. We'll complete the rest of the tasks in the level, so click on the front perspective and click on the spinner, and we'll make four more copies. So I'll drag and move 25 units in Y, and keep doing it until you have five in the level. Once you're done, go back into the perspective view and navigate to a side view. We'll manually set the color and length. So the back one will remain red, but scale to 1.6. The next one is 300 for hue and 1.4 for scale and repeat this step and for each step subtract 60 from the hue and 0.2 from the scale until you reach 120 for hue and 0.8 for scale for the very front one. Okay, once you're done with that, for the last geometry we want to include, go to the Geo folder and in the course files, you should also have smcap.fbx. Drag that in, and my import settings seem to have reset, so I'll do it again. But if your settings have not changed, then just click import and close this out. And double click to give it the MI gray material. and drag it directly into the level and set it to 0, 100, 0. Next for rendering settings, search for a post-process volume and drag it in, zero out the location and I'll move it away a thousand in Z. Then in the details, search infinite extent and set it to true and search lumen and double the scene lighting quality and also double the final gather quality and go down and also double the reflection quality. Lastly, search for bloom and increase the intensity to 1. All right, there's one last code we have to add. So go into the level blueprint. And first we need to create an escape keyboard event. And out of pressed, we do quit game. And also don't forget to disable consume input in the event. And we need this as the escape key in standalone game mode doesn't work by default. And I'll add in one last node up here and create an execute console command. And inside type t.max fps space 60. Now what this is, is a frame rate limiter. And for works like this, anything more than 90 is pointless. And especially if you're doing installation, in most cases, the large projectors, LED panels and screens are at 60 FPS. So high frame rates only put strain on the GPU. So I like to include it. 
Okay, let's compile and save and go back to map one. Now to run this in full screen mode, have Zigsim running and run this in standalone game. Let it compile and press F11 to full screen. And here it is. It's pretty neat, isn't it? If you made it to the end, congratulations. If you enjoyed this course, make sure to share it with your friends and colleagues. And to stay up to date, make sure to follow my Instagram at YFJSR. And thank you very much once again.